Welcome to this uh, 2023 NeuroPixels course. Uh, I remind you that there is a web page for this course, which has been put in the chat, and we will put it periodically in the chat. Um, I am one of the members of the advisory board. The other is Nick Steinmetz, but the organizers are Celian and Enni, whom I will introduce in a second, uh, well, in a few minutes. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, and after a few weeks after this course, we will put all the lectures on the YouTube channel. And in this channel, you can also find uh, previous um, editions of this course. Um, I would like to give you a very brief introduction to NeuroPixels and tell you what the problem is that they solved. Um, this is a microphotography, a microphotograph of uh, a fantastic microelectrode that David Hubel uh, published in 1953. It had only one recording site. Then as, um, as things improved over the years, in 2005, people were using these polytrodes, uh, which had many recording sites. But one of the things you will notice is that as you go up the shank, you, much of the space is taken up by the wires, which by the way is true of our spinal cord too. Um, and uh, this was an issue that got resolved by the arrival of uh, IMEC and uh, the fabrication of semiconductor techniques. Um, in 2017, this NeuroPixels probe was published. And here, essentially, the wires, it, they don't really exist as wires because now we're into the semiconductor world, but they are um, uh, 0.2 microns wide, which is substantially smaller than, than the others. And this has led to an exponential growth in the number of sites, of recording sites per shank. Neuropixels are up, up here. Um, briefly, Neuropixels probes have a one centimeter shank, except for a version that has been made now for, for primates. On this shank, you will have 960 recording sites, but you have to pick 384 of them. Um, and But the beauty of it is that out of the Neuropixels probe comes a signal that is fully uh, digitized and, um, and uh, can be plugged in essentially into a computer. Uh, there have been almost, I think, more than 12,000 probes delivered to date, and there are uh, over 700 labs uh, using them. Um, the kind of experiments that one can do with these probes are transformative. I am 56 year old, so I did my PhD about 30 years ago. My whole PhD was about 50 neurons, I think. And, uh, and instead, this is a one recording and done in a half hour by one postdoc in which they inserted two Neuropixels probes and recorded from about 750 neurons. Um, and then, of course, with this kind of approach, one can record from um, multiple animals and combine the results covering a large chunk of brain. In this case, this is a study by Nick Steinmetz. Uh, and in our lab, Nature 2019, where he did 92 neuropixels insertions in 10 mice and recorded from 30,000 neurons. It's the kind of thing that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. Um, as you might have heard, there is now a new version of neuropixels probes, uh, which is called the 2.0. Uh, and this will be the topic of the second day of this course, one of the topics covered there. And just No, they were piloted in 2014, they were published in 2017, and they were released in 2019. The 2.0 probes were piloted in 2018, were published in 2021, and are released this year. So this is the kind of scale that it takes. It costs about 5 million euros to develop these probes, and so it is only thanks to... Um, charities and funders that this is possible because it would be very hard for a company to recoup that money if they invested it. So the probes are made by IMEC at cost price because IMEC is a non-profit research institution as Carolina will, Mora Lopez will explain after I'm done talking. Mm -hmm. Um, the, these are the, this is the design of the 1.0 probe, this is the design of the 2.0 probe, the 2.0 probe is miniaturized, it comes in four shanks, so you have 5,000 uh, recording sites, you still have 384 channels to choose from, um, as it will be explained very carefully on the second day of this course. The arrangement of recording sites is slightly different, these ones are aligned, um, which makes it easier to correct for probe motion. 
Um, so this is an experiment in which we imposed probe motion on purpose to, to imitate the motion that there would be between the brain and the probe in a live brain. Um, and then we found that in software, we could remove this motion. We could do motion correction. And that's thanks to the orderly uh, linear arrangement of recording sites. A beautiful thing that can be done with these probes because they are miniaturized, they're, they're, they're smaller. Um, one can implant them chronically more easily than one than 1.0 probes and record for, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 days um, from a decreasing number of neurons, but still you have neurons for many days. Um, and as will be explained again, I think in the second day of the course, it is possible to record from exactly the same neurons day after day, which is fantastic. Here's an example of two neurons um, that were recorded on day 14, day 15, and day 24. And these are neurons in visual cortex, and you can see that um, they give specific responses to different visual stimuli. And this is how we know that they are the same neuron. Um, and we can record from the same neurons for over 60 days. This is all material that you, that you will hear uh, much more in this course. Um, just to give you an idea, because there's a proliferation of neuropixels probes, I just want to introduce the fact that um, these are the only two released probes, the 1.0 and the 2.0. From the 1.0 platform, there have been two developments which are both on bioarchive. One is called NeuroPixels Ultra, which is about having a very high um, spatial resolution uh, of recording sites. You will find this on bioarchive. And another one is called NeuroPixels NHP for non-human primates. And the, in these um, ones, the shank is five centimeters long instead of one centimeter long. But the rest of the technology is the same as the NeuroPixels 1.0. The 2.0 probes I already discussed. Um, on that platform, we are building the NeuroPixels Opto probes um, that, in addition to recording electrically, they also emit light in the red and the blue. This is going to be a five-year research project before they are available to the public. Um, but we're starting to release some of the results, and they will be available at SFN 2023. And Tim Harris has been, uh, Tim Harris, who has headed all of these projects, um, is also now working on NeuroPixels NXT, which is another platform that is much more miniaturized. It uses another level of miniaturization, min miniaturization in semiconductors. So this was just a broad overview of NeuroPixels. Everything I said will appear in the course, uh, except maybe for this slide. Uh, I just want to tell you something about you. Right now, there's 208 of you, which is remarkable because it's about one third of the people who signed up. And usually there's a lower percentage. Um, this is where you work. Um, many of you in America and United Kingdom, other parts of Europe, um, some of you around um, here in the uh, Middle East, uh, India, China. Um, I imagine the ones in California haven't woken up yet and the ones in China and Japan maybe, no, mostly China uh, will want to go to sleep soon. Thank you for staying up late at night for us. Uh, and then who are you? You are, uh, well, first of all, 48% women, which is fantastic. Um, and we have gender equality. Um, you are pretty evenly spread in terms of expertise. Um, many of you, uh, well, some of you have no knowledge of NeuroPixels. Um, uh, the majority are setting up for experiments, but a big chunk also are beginners. Uh, and we have some intermediates, a lot of PhD students, a lot of postdocs and some PIs. Uh, great to see research staff. Yay, research staff. Um, and so welcome and thank you for joining us. 214 of you right now. And a brief overview of where we're going. The, this course is divided into two days. The first day is an introduction to NeuroPixels covering lots of topics that have been covered also in previous years, but going really fast and giving you pointers more than instruction. The second day goes in depth into spike sorting with KiloSort, NeuroPixels 2.0, and chronic implants, and chronic implants that can be explanted. 